We may love this bumbling friends character, but he definitely had his flaws. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 times Ross was the worst. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at scenes and situations involving Ross from the TV show Friends that totally made us cringe. Bud Nick. Spud Nick. <laughs> Number 10, when he let Chandler take the blame. I think he's stoned again. Ross pretty much single-handedly ruined Chandler's relationship with Monica's parents before Chandler and Monica even got married. In this Thanksgiving episode, Chandler is trying to impress Jack and Judy before he and Monica announce that they're dating and living together. You know, Ross sure is a great guy. You know, I've always felt that how a young man turns out is a reflection on his father. He can't figure out why they don't like him, but it finally comes out that when he and Ross were college roommates, Ross's parents came for a visit and smelled something suspect in their dorm room. And so I told them that you had gotten stoned and jumped out the window. Rather than fessing up, Ross blamed it on Chandler. You are such a tattletale! <laughs> that is not what friends are for. Number 9, when he threw himself a funeral. There are so many things wrong with Ross's behavior in this episode. When he and Chandler become members of their college's alumni site, they escalate playing pranks on one another until things get out of hand. Why would Ross tell everyone in your class that you are as gay as the day is long? <laughs> the problems start when Ross posts on the forum that Chandler is, quote, very gay, in response to Chandler's post. Let's set aside how problematic this simple thing is and focus on the fact that Ross goes on to plan a memorial service for himself after becoming worried that his old classmates don't care that he has allegedly died. This is so exciting, my first mourner! We knew he had some self-esteem issues, but this is taking it way too far. You sick freak, who does that? Number eight, when he gave Phoebe a hard time for being spiritual. This cat is my mother. In season four, Phoebe finds a cat who she feels an instant connection with and announces to the group that she thinks it's a reincarnation of her deceased mother. By this point in the series, fans had learned to just go with Phoebe's crazy antics, but clearly Ross had not. Little girl misses her cat. Crazy lady thinks her mother is in a cat. He cruelly denies the possibility that the cat could be her mom, not bothering to use any ounce of sensitivity when breaking it down to her. Julio the cat, <laughs> not mom. He does apologize for this one after realizing the error of his ways, but that doesn't take away from his earlier actions. Come here. <laughs> Mrs. Buffet. Number seven, when he wrote the list. After Ross starts dating Julie, he's faced with a conundrum when he realizes that his longtime crush Rachel has feelings for him. Rather than dealing with this in any sort of adult way, he, spurred on by Chandler and Joey, makes a list of pros and cons about each woman. I guess, you know, sometimes she's, she's a little ditzy, you know? <laughs> And I've, I've seen her be a little too into her looks. All of his criticisms of Rachel are pretty harsh, considering he says he's been in love with her since high school. He calls her ditzy and spoiled, not to mention looks down on her job. We can't say we're surprised that it took Rachel a while to forgive him for this one. Number 6, when he helped found an I Hate Rachel Club. Brad Pitt's guest spot on Friends was one of the highlights of the series, as the character he plays is so hilarious opposite Jennifer Aniston's Rachel. So by this point, we know that Rachel was pretty oblivious to Ross's existence in high school. But he took her lack of interest as something more insidious and helped form an I Hate Rachel Green Club. Whoa, my God. So what, you all just joined together to hate me? Who else was in this club? Me and Ross. Sorry, co-founded. Not only that, one of the actions of the club was starting a rumor about Rachel that was not only totally un-PC, but also tarnished her reputation. Everyone at our school heard it! Everybody at my school heard it. You were the hermaphrodite cheerleader from Long Island? Oh, no! <laughs> Number five, when he fired his nanny because he was a dude. Ross seems to have some insecurities about his masculinity and takes it out by enforcing gender stereotypes several times throughout the series. One of those times is when he refuses to let his son play with his favorite toy, which happens to be a Barbie. Look, man. It's a toy that protects U.S. oil interests overseas. Go, Joe! Later on, when Rachel hires an incredible and experienced nanny for Emma, Ross objects just because he happens to be male. What, what kind of job is that for a man? A nanny? Oh, it's like if a woman wanted to be 
Yes. Not only does he assume Sandy's sexuality, he eventually fires him because of his feminine qualities. Th that's okay. I had a lot of offers from other families. I just picked you guys because I liked you the best. Oh, damn you, Giller! Looks like you've got a little self-reflection to do, Ross. Number four, when he told Rachel not to hang out with Mark. Possibly the most cited example of Ross's awfulness is the entire storyline where he's jealous of Rachel's relationship with her coworker Mark. From the beginning, Ross is distrustful of any man who would want to help his girlfriend out, assuming that he simply wants to sleep with her. He then goes on to act kind of like an unabashed psychopath, delivering over-the-top gifts to her office and calling frequently to remind Mark who Rachel is with, as if he could possibly forget. <laughs> what the, uh, what's... Mark doing answering your phone. Oh, he's just goofing around. <laughs> oh, hey, that's, that's funny. It's this very issue that leads Ross and Rachel to go on a break, but we'll get into that in a bit. Number three, when Ross doesn't divorce Rachel. After getting drunkenly married in Vegas, both Ross and Rachel agree that they have to have the marriage annulled, despite the fact that Ross isn't eager to have three failed marriages. How is this going to affect you, really? He tells her he'll deal with it, but then later reveals to Phoebe that he never actually did. I didn't get the annulment. He essentially thinks he can trick her into staying married to him, all the while slowly realizing that he's in love with her. He then preys on her vulnerability when she's upset about having to leave her apartment and asks her to live with him instead, while they're still legally married. Get it together, buddy. She is definitely gonna fall in love with you again. Now, is that what you want? Uh, is that what I want? Yes. Number two, when he said the wrong name at the altar. Sorry, there's no excuse for this one. Ross's whole relationship with Emily is littered with mistakes. From their quick engagement to him threatening to leave her if she doesn't marry him on the agreed upon day, after her dream venue is literally demolished. How can this be happening? What are we gonna do? Then of course, there's the teeny tiny issue of him saying, Take thee, Rachel. Instead of Emily when it comes time to actually tie the knot. No matter what was going through his head, it takes some serious issues to not have it together to say your fiancé's name at the altar. Are you surprised this marriage didn't work out? Yeah, us either. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. I play to win, all right? In order for me to win, other people have to lose. So if you're gonna play poker with me, don't expect me to be a nice guy. <laughs> Number one, we were on a break. We know this issue is a controversial one amongst Friends fans, but we can all agree that no matter where you stand on the we were on a break issue, Ross acted immaturely throughout the entire saga. Whether or not you think it was okay for Ross to sleep with the copy girl that night, it's totally unacceptable that he refuses to take any responsibility for his actions and own up to the fact that what he did would inevitably be hurtful. Time was what you needed just to gain a little perspective. <laughs> we were on a break! Not to mention the fact that the quote break happened in the first place because of the totally jealous and possessive way he was acting towards Rachel. You know, I can't believe I even thought of getting back together with you. We are so over. <laughs> Fine by me! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.